So next up, we have a keynote talk from Anne-Marie Slaughter, currently CEO of the Think Tank and Action, uh, Action Tank, New America. Anne-Marie Slaughter is a global leader, scholar, and public intellectual. She was the J. Sinclair Armstrong Professor of International Foreign and Comparative Law at Harvard Law School and served as president of the American Society of International Law. From 2002 to 2009, she was Bert G. Kurtstetter's 66th University Professor of Politics and International Affairs and Dean of the School of Public and International Affairs at Princeton University. In 2009, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton appointed her as the first woman director of policy planning in the US Department, State Department. Slaughter has written and lectured widely on global network design and leadership on gender equality and elevating the value of care for both men and women, and on American renewal. The author or editor of nine books, she is a contributing editor to the Financial Times and a regular columnist for Project Syndicate. Please join me in welcoming Anne-Marie Slaughter to the stage. Thank you, and hello to everyone here and online. You know, it's not often that we get to envisage something and then sometime later actually see it come into existence. And that's something I think all of us can do. And perhaps after a very tumultuous week, it's something we need to do. So in preparation to this, for this talk for this keynote short, and then we're gonna to go to a panel. Um, I went back to a memo that I wrote to Darren Walker, president of the Ford Foundation, uh, in September of 2016. I remember spending a lot of August 2016. August is often a month where I can write and think and do something other than email. Uh, and I sent him this memo, it was a long memo, and it asked for a lot of money, surprise, surprise. Uh, and it, the title was Building a Public Interest Technology Ecosystem. And I started with the history of public interest law. And many of you who are members of Pitt UN have heard about the analogies to how public interest, public interest law was built. It was a field that didn't exist when I was in law school. It was deliberately created. And the Ford Foundation had a lot to do with that. It was created as an academic uh, area of study and practice with, clinic, with uh, law school clinics. And I then talked about the beginnings of public interest technology, because this was 2016, and it wasn't like we were inventing it. Uh, Ford and a number of other foundations had already been engaged. There was a, a group of foundations called NetGain. There was, of course, Code for America. The, there was the Obama uh, Digital Service. So, so there were many elements. But I wrote, and I'm, I'm just gonna read you a couple sentences. As an ecosystem, however, PIT, which P-I-T, this was in writing, is as an ecosystem, PIT is fragmentary at best and very fragile. As Code for America is discovering, again, 2016, it is not enough to create brigades of civic technologists to harness and build on their experience, the experience of those brigades and all of the public interest technologists, they must be able to plug into a larger system, a set of educational and career pathways that reinforce one another and add up to a larger whole. Moreover, these pathways and the networks that enable them must be interconnected and deliberately nurtured as part of a larger system. Well, eight years later, that's where we are. Yes, give yourselves a hand. So that was the vision that I sent Darren Walker. Many of us brought it about. Uh, New America played a central role, but together with all those other actors who were already there, and then all of you. And you can see that ecosystem here. You can see it with all of you here and online, but also you just heard about the global dimension of that ecosystem. And at the UN General Assembly this past September, 
uh, I was at a big event uh, on the expansion of the pit ecosystem globally. And it was really something to see. People from all over this country and from many other countries there talking about where to go next. Uh, so this, the ecosystem is alive and growing. And I want to just talk specifically then about the role of pit UN. And I, I laugh every time I say pit because we we agonized over whether to call it PIT or PIT or something, something that maybe had a slightly better acronym, but I've, I always loved the fact that the engineers and the technologists kind of embraced the whole idea of, of PIT. But PIT UN has played a central role in building that ecosystem. In 2018, Ford and New America and actually Hewlett helped sponsor a uh, convening at Green Tree on Long Island of about 20 university presidents and provosts. And they were interested in creating a university network. But of course, many of you are academics, first we had to define our terms. So a group of faculty, including Deirdre Mulligan, you're gonna hear from her uh, on the next uh, panel, uh, worked very intensively to define public interest technology, which is a much harder task than defining public interest law, because, of course, technology is not just one discipline. So they did a lot of work, and they finally came up with a definition, uh, and we actually launched the network in 2019. During that time, also 2017, 2018, a critical thing happened. Andreen Soli, came to New America as a fellow and then as head of the network. And the rest is history. Um, so give, give Andreen a big a round of applause. The first convening was at Georgetown uh, and the, the Pitt UN Fund, which was essential, was then established and we had our first set of network challenge grants, uh, 3.1 million to 27 grantees. Going forward every year with, again, rounds of grants and convenings, Andreen and her wonderful team really built the network and also focused it on equity, justice, and diversity, which is essential. And we've been hearing about that this morning, and we will keep hearing about it. If we're really talking about public interest technology, then it has to be for the entire public, and it is definitely not. The technology ecosystem generally is still uh, very partial uh, when we look at the population uh, as a whole in terms of being representative. So that is something that the Pitt UN has really pounded on and Andreen has made a central focus and we're very proud of. From 2020 to 2024, the network's grown from 21 to 63 members. It's deployed 16 million uh, in grant funds to 155 uh, projects, building new curricula, research centers, internships, fellowships, career fairs, and more. Uh, those 63 members have either developed or reimagined 60 new courses, uh, all and 22 clinics or labs, as well as a number of degree programs. Uh, Arizona State University has a two-year degree program in public interest technology, and I know a number of other universities are, are pushing in that direction. We've had all sorts of convenings, both virtual and physical. This past July, uh, we had a kind of wonderful culminating moment for Pitt UN thus far at the White House, hosted by Deirdre Mulligan in the White House Office of Science and Technology, and it was called Advancing Public Service in the Technology Ecosystem. We announced uh, almost 100 million uh, new commitments in government, philanthropy, and civil society to continue building the entire field of public interest technology. And the National Science Foundation's very competitive Red Dot program, every time I see it, I, I think read it, it's not, it's the Red Dot program, uh, will fund new projects uh, at 14 Pitt UN institutions this year, which is really a testament uh, to your strength as a network. Uh, lots of, pro of those projects and best practices are actually uh, listed uh, in an accompanying White House fact sheet that you can find online. So that is the five years, the first five years of Pitt UN. 
It is now time for the second phase of Pitt UN, and Pitt UN is spinning out of New America. New America will remain closely connected, but it is, it is now spinning out as an independent organization that increasingly is your organization. Uh, different universities are building regional hubs, are raising their own funds, are really taking it to the level of not something that needs to be incubated and nurtured, but something uh, that is much more owned uh, by all of it, its members. Uh, and as we've just seen, it, it is national, regional, global. Um, I, I want to, first of all, just congratulate uh, both Andrine and her team, and also the Ford Foundation, uh, the, Ni the uh, uh, Siegel Foundation, McGovern, uh, MasterCard, and a number of other funders, including now the National Science Foundation, uh, for getting us to this phase. Uh, I want to um, just extend our warmest wishes on behalf of New America uh, for the success of this next five years. As I said, it is a rare moment that we get to actually see something be born uh, and collectively take uh, pride in it. And finally, I, I do want to emphasize that New America will continue doing public interest technology work. We're deeply engaged in the actual practice, which we call the new practice of public problem solving, where we're connecting technology, bureaucracy wrangling, policy expertise, uh, and working directly with governments at the state and federal level to improve the service, the, the delivery of benefits and government services. Again, lots of other organizations do that. It's a key dimension of the practice of public interest technology. I think also the field of digital public infrastructure, and we heard about that uh, in the panel this morning on principles on public interest technology, that infrastructure, the, the architecture of the digital world and increasingly the architecture of democracies is a core part of the careers uh, in public interest technology. Uh, and then also still thinking about technology policy. Uh, for public interest technology to flourish, we need policies that enable it to flourish. And th those policies have to enact the values of equity and inclusion and belonging and justice that this network has been dedicated to. So at New America, those programs are under the leadership of Lillian Corral, who is uh, the vice president of, of our democracy and technology programs. We will remain on the advisory board of Pitt UN, and we will remain a strong and supportive partner of all of your work.